Welcome to Hilarity by Default's weekly Briscoe County Junior Review, starring the highly regarded chin of Bruce Campbell. We at last reached the final two-part episode of the lone season of The Adventures of Briscoe County Junior with High Treason, an espionage thriller with Briscoe and Bowler facing off against a corrupt military general who plans to assassinate the President of the United States of America to gain political power. With their lives in the balance due to a sham court-martial, our two heroes are joined by series favorites as they try to prove their innocence and protect their country. Zeppelins, football plays, and rocket arrow hijinks ensue. An explosive showcase represents the best of the Briscoe series, bringing back old characters, steampunk spirit, and deadly stakes as Briscoe, Bowler, and company find themselves pitted against the most dastardly of foes. Politics and football players listen first of all you leave you leave former hall of famers current college coaches and awesome football players out of the dastardly conversation nothing is more dastardly than zeppelin puns mother <laughs> you oh. know I, I i kept it to myself because at the very beginning of this you said that there was only one thing that you were somewhat familiar with Briscoe on and it was the Zeppelin and I'm like geez it's the last episode I can't are you I'm like I, I, I well I mean I had kind of guessed it because like I, I I had I had finished <laughs> the first part of the two-part finale and I'm like this Mickey fireballs in the Mickey fireball in last episode isn't it and it's in damn near the last sequence right it's in the back half of that episode <laughs> so, and listen, you mentioned steampunk spirit in the NFL. Things I wouldn't have put together until people are doing the tire drill with wagon wheels and throwing dynamite like it's a football. That's the shiz I'm talking about right there. Whoo! How about that? Oh! For you, this must have been a hell of an ending. Um, being the the football fanatic that you are, I think I think I'll put it this way: um, we we before, we're not going to give ratings yet. But the second half that focused more on the football aspect was uh, inferior. But they crowbarred in some of the football stuff, but not all of it felt crowbarred. Um, and listen, for what it's worth, Terry Bradshaw did a pretty solid job acting in the episode. He did a really good job. He's got the Louis Louisiana draw you require or a southern draw you'd require for the stereotypical officer of his sort the evil army guy and i love the mustache they put on him to finish the job so it fit really well given that football dynamic that we have seen other episodes where they use that kind of dynamic and they uh they kind of overblow it over here i thought they handled it fairly well yeah. terry bradshaw his acting wasn't bad in this i agree with you some of the other football players eh, <laughs> yeah i left a little bit to be desired there's one guy that says it's gonna be fun and I yeah. just said it much more vivaciously than he did. This is going to be fun. Carl Banks was meant, meant to stop people in the, in, in the backfield. He was not meant to, uh, to, he was meant to penetrate backfields, not incursions involving Briscoe County Jr. But he looked the part. I'll give him that. He did. I will say that it was kind of interesting how they masked some of the bad acting from the other football players with those wacky subtitles. We got to go around now, gentlemen, if we go around and we could waste the better part of the day. Still here. Ken Norton Jr. was brilliant with that. I, 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 hey, let's make him an Italian and make fun of spaghetti westerns. Okay. I, I, I loved it. And listen, not bad for a guy whose previous claim to fame was when he took back an interception as a linebacker and started punching the goalposts. That was, you know, anyways. So let's talk a little bit about the good and the bad. And I'm gonna just start off with the good. Cracker Jack opening and cliffhanger. As mm -hmm. Bowler and Briscoe find themselves in a mad dash to the Mexican border with the US Army in pursuit. An opening that's equaled, if not overtaken, by the dire ending in which Bowler and Briscoe are shot dead via firing squad. My initial joke, and I was gonna pull this, this prank on you. I was gonna pretend that the first part was the final episode. And then surprise you the following week and say, oh, look, there's a part two. I, you know, honestly, I got to tell you, Demos, I wish you'd done it just as a sociological experiment, because I honestly feel like the the only thing that took that away from being truly great is the fact I shouldn't say kept it from being. But the only thing that kept you even thinking that there was still a next episode is, well, A, we, we knew there was another episode. You mentioned that earlier. 
But if 2B continued doesn't pop up, I couldn't guarantee they survived. It was excellently done. And 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 the ploy with the spoiler alert, you know, the the, the rubber bullets being the answer, genius. Listen, other than the fact that I couldn't see the uh the blacksmith twins themselves, I envisioned their work helping Gomez Adams do his thing. So much for life after death. Let's take the uncertainty of the series cancellation. If this was just a regular episode, yeah, you knew Bowler and Briscoe are gonna survive. But I liked how they played it up. They they didn't treat it like a joke. There was deadly seriousness yeah. leading up to that. It made it much more shocking. Listen, my dude Jules knocking out some swing low made it real for me, man. I'm gonna throw that out there. <laughs> I will say that all the returning characters here get a, sh get a chance to shine, oh, yeah. with one exception. We see the return of Sheriff Aaron Viva, the Elvis precursor with little time for conversation when lunch is involved. <laughs> or hey, I would say he has a lot to talk about describing everything that's on that big ass plate. We see Professor Albert Wickwire return, enjoyably played by John Aston, who's truly a real gas here. And of course, we got Pete, the crook with a hint of an inevitable endurance to befit a zombie. Hello, Demosthenes. <laughs> How many times did they crowbar bar, bar in hello, Brisco? Just so the guy can do it as much as they could in one episode. I'm willing to bet that there was some sort of a wager placed on how many times they can get Pete Leviticus Hunter, a man so resourceful he brings his own Bible to the Fireball. trial. Thank you, but if you don't mind... I brought my own. I'm pretty sure somebody won or lost their bet. And how many times he said, hello, Risco. This one has the most pathetic one of all. When they find him in jail, he's like, hello, Barisco. I got to say, Pete especially has come a long way to succeed as a welcome charmer in this, in this show as a whole. I mean, the guy who would bring, as we just said, his own Bible to a trial and then drop it to the floor and push it away when he's about to lie. So great. So great. And by the way, listen, I've never been this excited about a guy who handles his piece this often in public and then other people handle it in front of him just to mock him. And of course, we've got Whip Morgan. Whip Morgan. I I'm going to be fair. I'm going to be fair about Whip here because he isn't necessarily bad here. But here's the thing. His bland character is easily outclassed by his more colorful compatriots. Bro. Especially Pete. I can put this right here in one scene. Okay. Two characters are literally, literally air guitaring the scene. And his use is to be buried beneath ground. That's exactly what Whit Morgan's role is and was basically, theoretically, uh, in a nutshell, in that image throughout this episode. Uh, he probably, he pretty much had the least to do out of all of them. His, his, his biggest task in all of this was literally shoveling dirt. Well, I, I mean, listen, there, there, in, in the part where Briscoe is testifying initially, and he's talking about building his crack team. And they're like, hey, Viva, all right. Well, you know, first they mentioned Pete, of course, you know. Hello, Briscoe, right, fine. He's like, oh. <laughs> you ain't nothing but a hound dog. Viva, yes, all right, who's next on this awesome team? I know it can't be Dixie Cummings, our uh, cousins, because she's off in Europe somewhere. Who is Whip Morgan? Whip, Whip Morgan? Morgan. Uh-oh. Okay. <laughs> oh. You know, well, like I said, the, he doesn't—he doesn't really have much of a chance to 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 Sorry. drown out the episode in any way. Yes. He's busy shuffling dirt, <laughs> literally. But the biggest thing is that there's an overall sense of uh, finality to this two-parter, which adds a bittersweet trait as a whole. Briscoe and Bowler's heart-to-heart -heart forever cements their bond and their conversation pre-execution is handled with the seriousness and warmth it deserves. Furthermore, despite its cavalcade of characters, the focus remains where it ought to be and even the gives the original trio of Bowler, Briscoe, and Socrates some memorable moments together. I especially liked It's a Pointless Scene by freaking love it, the scene where the three of them are talking about air pressure. To add to that, Socrates' pool doing his, his thing Looked like the Socrates pool 
in uh, uh, the episode where he's trying to hunt down the mystery, the one that Brooklyn we Dodgers. Up, yeah, in the Brooklyn Dodger episode where the uh, the cheeky blind or, or uh, the, uh, the peaky blinders were the biggest part of it, right? Um, that episode was made great mostly by Socrates and his investigation part. And we said at the time, at least I know I did, I'm fairly certain this mark will not be hit again by Socrates in an episode. Well, I'm still technically right on volume. When he is bidding his compatriots, Briscoe and Bowler, adieu just before the execution, that was some strong, strong stuff brought in that particular scene. I enjoyed it thoroughly. Actually, I enjoyed his presence in the courtroom. He didn't do much, but right. his questioning of Pete. Correct me if I'm wrong, but um, short of murder, you've been charged with or convicted of pretty much every crime in the book. Isn't that correct? I have never violated any agricultural quarantine laws. But given that, there are some great and hilarious set pieces at play here, including, and my personal favorite, the bungled rescue plot that devolves into Briscoe and Pete playing a losing game of charades <laughs> with arrow rockets. Of course, a terrific airship escape that recalls the series kickstarting rocket ship, helium, Led Zeppelin puns, and all and a down-to-the-second rescue of the president involving Bowler throwing a true touchdown whilst Comet and Briscoe ride to glory. Yes, and that pass was received by a Hall of Fame quarterback, by the way, in Terry Branch. Not to mention probably the most memorable game of chess I've seen since from Russia with Love. No, <laughs> fair enough, fair enough. Hey, listen, listen, Comet at him on the edge there, man. I really wanted to see how that game turned out. Anything involving the NFL crew, like I said, was done pretty well. They're not actors first, obviously, but I feel like they were handled in such a fashion to where the scene still kept flowing that if they did something bad, you forgot about it because the tempo was there. The biggest misstep that they avoided was by not turning those characters into a joke. They they had right. some comedic characteristics, but they're still a deadly threat throughout. And for uh, a two-parter with such stakes, I mean, let's face it, the cliffhanger involves the supposed deaths of Briscoe and Bowler. It never devolves into something stupid. It, right. it kind of reminded me to a degree, although I think the villain in, in this one is a little bit stronger, it kind of reminded me of the Heart of Dixie episode with David Warner. Right. Yeah, no, I could see that too. I think the villain duties were handled well between March and the uh, general. You know, the set piece I really did like the most was the trial where Poole informs them, yo, they're probably stacking this against you. You really see, and I, I hate to keep bringing it up, I just didn't expect it to go this well. If you've ever seen Terry Bradshaw as an analyst on NFL Fox Sunday, he's he's the bumbler, man. He's the comic relief, and, and this is a really serious role, granted, 20 years ago. If you've seen Terry Bradshaw in action as a human being, he's always silly. He's always kind of a bumbler type. He's the dauber from Coach. Except faster in his tempo. He's, he's goofier than that. There's more energy there. And he took that energy. The reason why I make sure to mention that energy, Demos, is first of all, throughout a lot of the flashbacks in the court scene, Bradshaw's narrating them, okay? Um, then when he gives that speech to the three bumbling whatevers, you know, to handle the business and and, and continue to go up the, the, the hill to, to track Briscoe and Bowler, that was, listen, that was either something he gave similar to what he gave to his own teammates or heard from a coach, you know, and and was delivered with enough fire that it was certainly believable. Everybody brings their A game here. Pete, Viva, Bowler, Briscoe, Comet. Uh, the professor. Uh, the prof yeah, the professor. Thank you. Even Whip is less annoying than usual. Everybody won. Yeah, and even though I was kind of sad, and I, I know that you were, that Dixie wasn't in this, I do find it a very, very nice nod that Briscoe's final request was a message to her. So it's not like she was completely forgotten. Tell Dixie I was thinking about it, will you? It's kind of funny that you mentioned the, the trial being your favorite show showpiece because I, I, I was thinking about this as I was watching the episode about how many final episodes in series involve some sort of trial. Sure. Uh, of course... Briscoe debuted the same year as The X-Files. In fact, they were playing right next to each other during the original run. And that show ended 
with or in the original incarnation ended with a trial seinfeld also ended with a trial i i I'm waiting to say that this 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 ep- episode this show this finale handled a uh, a trial showcase better than those two i mean listen did george costanza bring his own bible to his chief i don't think so and listen that's a great point you make about the trial trope which i don't know if that's an actual phrase out there that's just fun to say demos coin that be like J. Jonah Jameson. I want to nickel everybody someone says every time someone says trial trope, okay? This one was done so uniquely and so well. It is the epitome of there is no way this should work. You have Pete Hunter in here. Hello, Briscoe. No, I don't need a Bible. I brought my own. And 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 a fireball football hall of famer who's a bumpkin goofball by his reputation. Both doing very serious, heartfelt things. And, and blah. The oh, even the up. airship should have been the silliest thing there, but it was handled very, very, very well. Even I even like the helium joke that's played up there. Damn. We have to go to Pittman to help Carlos. No, we have to see the president. If you're going to make a good excuse to make people sound like Alvin and the Chipmunks, you, damn it, you put them in an airship. I'm down. <laughs> Which is funny. I think the, fu- the the final big coming thing that they introduced is actually the technology that failed overall by the time the show actually airs in terms of the actual historical timeline, right? I, I, still, I still proclaim that the shower was the real coming thing that Briscoe was looking for. No argument, man. We talked about that. that that's definitely correct. <laughs> well, we talked a lot about the positives. Let's talk a little bit about any negatives. And I have to say, for me, there's not really much that that's a negative here the the biggest thing is maybe the second part suffers a little bit from padding uh especially during the the whip viva and uh pete jailbreak wait a minute you're referring to two people air guitaring dueling banjos as filler demos i am insulted yeah their air guitar deliverance battle that's just what the finale air banjo my bad it's really just there to give the characters something to do until they're needed at the end. There's really not much I didn't enjoy. That's the only nitpick I have, honestly. You know, like I said, they crowbarred in a few too much NFL puns, but I feel like I'm going to be more sensitive to that. Demos, you've never run the tire drill. Did you pick up the tire Oh, I drill? definitely picked up on it. It was hard to miss. But Maybe some of the more specific references may have gone over my head. There are certain other things, like he's talking about a spread Y formation. No, that's something a quarterback would actually ask for people to do when Bradshaw happens to be a a Hall of Fame version of it. Granted, and by the way, the other guy who's about to give orders and then it's, it gets cut off by Bradshaw, it's the other quarterback, Jim Harbaugh, current, current Michigan head coach and former Colts quarterback who preceded Peyton Manning, that he cuts off. All right, everybody spread out. Wide formation. Just a minute, Cowboy. I give the orders around here. All right, everybody spread out, wide formation. No, you don't lead. This is my show. This is my huddle. I think those are very well done references because, yeah, as a viewer, I kind of, I I recognize that there is a reference being made, but it's not enough to take me out of the episode. And then, uh, in fact, but but what you're saying, it's a hell of a lot cleverer than I would have deduced. Exactly. It's like our talks with Major League Two, except that actually sucked, and this is a good episode. So there's a lot of references that you would miss, but you're better off missing them than watching Major League Two. Instead, they're what they should be. They should they're icing on the cake that is pretty dad just pretty damn tasty. And I give you credit for spotting Bowler throwing that like a football to Bradshaw at the end. We're gonna do a farther breakdown of the characters in next week's episode. So I think it's about time we get to our final comment rating. How would you rate High Treason Part 1 and 2? So if I were to do these in, uh, episodes individually, which we are not, but if I were, Part t- 1 is a clear 5. Part 2 is a 4. I put 2 together, that's 4.5, right? So since we don't do halves in this show, and everything delivered overall as well as it did from end to end, I'm forced to give this overall final finale experience the last and final 5 of the series <laughs> that is that is absolutely hilarious we disagreed uh, the only episode we disagreed on was last week i 110 percent agree with you here uh, first part would be a five second part would be a four together 4.5 i would round up 
to a 5. The best kind of finale you can ask for overall. If there's one true justification of treason to be found in High Treason, it's Fox's cancellation of the show. Here, here. We'll have more to say about that next week, as I said, with our series wrap-up video, including the direction the Season 2 would have taken. But as a series finale, one could probably do no better than this two-parter, which plays much more satisfactorily than many, many series finales go. Perhaps the greatest gift Briscoe could have given us is a complete one-season series that leaves no major threads annoyingly dangling into oblivion. It's an exciting and touching wrap-up to the to the show as a whole, ending with a daring ride into the sunset for heroes. Who could ask for more? Hey, listen, man. I, I mean, but but you got to understand, it's not like Fox made a lot of these mistakes canceling good series. I mean, I know I'm just a family guy, but um, this was just a firefly in the ointment that they missed in canceling it way too soon. It's not like they can fill a whole dollhouse full of things like this that they canceled that shouldn't have been. Um and I'll leave it at that. Do you think they were trying to to uh, make up for those losses by reviving Last Man Standing from ABC? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, listen, they actually extended a show called Prison Break, where at the end of the first season, they got out of the prison. How do you continue a show called Prison Break when the Maybe spider got out of jail? Ending on a five, that's, that's the way you ought to do it. Um, I'm very happy that we've done this. Of course, if you're Briscoe fans and you've been enjoying these reviews, stay tuned. We have a lot more coming, including, like I said before, our Season 1 wrap-up next week, as well as, uh, I think Kyle said said this best in our pre-production meeting, a what it could have been uh, yeah. with Season 2. And, you know, maybe a few top five lists here and there. We'll see. Let us know in the comments below what you'd we'll like to see us do. Definitely. We'll take suggestions on that. I know we get a lot of suggestions for who could have been uh, topics, which is awesome. Definitely want to see what you guys want us to break down for top five on this. Um, I know there's a few we're probably going to knock out. We'd be fools if we don't do top five villains. And if Demos wasn't planning to, I just pressured him into it. Boom, that's what a good co-host does. And <laughs> it kind of helps that Briscoe and Bowler kind of laid that out for us. So. I don't agree with them that's right i said it there's only one of them that i actually agree with in their breakdown and you'll hear all about that uh oh when we do that episode yeah and we're also open to suggestions for what other tv show we should do as a follow-up yes. i'm i'm kind of leaning towards another guy with a hat but we're open to suggestions odd job had his own show i would freaking watch that <laughs> Even if it was a YouTube show of him just throwing it to see what he can cut with it. <laughs> it's kind of like that that one series, like, you know, will it blend? They throw something random in a blender and see if it breaks down. They will it decapitate? Draw- yes, de- bingo! God bless America. What do you say we put some miles under these horses? I'm with you. You ready, Comet? <laughs> Let's ride.